Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Another day. Well, the comments were pretty good. And one of the comments was, you can't store water in garbage cans. So I thought, wow, I didn't know that. So I investigated and you can keep water in food grade plastic. So most likely I'm gonna have to go back to the cooler idea. I wanted to get away from the coolers because coolers are $25 each, but you know, at least I could fill them with about 50 gallons of water, um, like out of the hose quickly before, you know, before the situation is intense. And um, also I, I discovered the um, Sawyer Mini uh, water for your purifier you can hook onto your kitchen sink and uh, the survival straw so if you I don't know why the the snow water was undrinkable I don't know if it was chemicals or what but um, evidently that was an issue I mean if the whole state is is covered with snow you think you'd be able to drink the, the snow and then uh, you can store water in glass or stainless steel. Um, so my grandmother used to um, store food in stainless steel trash cans. Now they had a well. Out here, they've taken control of a lot of the wells. And um, so, you know, a lot of us don't have a well, but if you use the stainless steel, you cannot treat your water in the stainless steel with uh, chlorine so you have to know that so i was my idea was to just buy gallons of water and i heard you need one gallon per day and one de gallon for your big dogs but uh the people in texas were saying they used 30 gallons of water not counting the water that they uh boiled so i don't think you know the gallons you know well depends you know, and what you were storing them. And now, you know, the bigger gallons of water, they want $10 for those water. Uh, you know, they're just gouging the public any way possible. I would consider those, maybe. Uh, I gotta think about this, I'm still on that. Okay, so we need water and we need food. And we need gas, cash, a weapon and heat. So um, I was thinking, wow, I don't know if this is a depression and I'll tell you why. Okay, the worst years of the depression were from 1929 to 1933. So it was actually bad the first four years. So if this is the beginning of a depression, the worst of it would be 2020 and it would be 25% over. So that would be good. So what we do today is really going to affect the next 10 years. Um, I have been incredibly cheap all year and I see evidence of inflation. So I am gonna be stocking up. I'm gonna be stocking up on non-food items this year, this week. Uh, I, I want to stock up on uh, things like um, A and D ointment, um, toilet paper, stuff like that. So um, one of the things that we have going for us right now, the depression was caused by a stock market crash. But what we have is 5G technology and that could really expand our um, industry and everything because this 5g it's bad but it creates a lot of we could be like uh, like you know on the cusp of some technological advent which would be good like um you know the tesla cars the um all kinds of things, the 5G phones, which brings me to, these are five free uh, stocks, www.fool.com. 
Okay, I heard of these people on Adapt 2030. And what they are, get your five free stocks. What they are is they're like a stock, they're stock traders and they are, you know, um, you can join their like group if you wish and, and get stock advice. And um, I, I knew about them and I think it might be a good idea, but I will try to get five free stocks. Um, I got five free stocks from Robinhood, but I only got one free stock and I um, will get into that um, in a minute, but I had a pharma, pharmacology, uh, you know, company, a stock, and I switched it to Kroger. It was only worth five bucks, but my Kroger stock has gone up. That was before Kroger laid off all the employees. <laughs> so um, try to get your free stock. Okay, so now I could see this also could affect Bitcoin because it would in, it would enable payments and money transfers instantaneously, practically worldwide. So this this five G uh, could really be good. So we want to think about that. There's a strong possibility that uh, the that the stock market will not crash, especially if we get into some uh, tech explosive growth, which would be great. So the thing is, the tech companies are getting very powerful. <laughs> so I, uh, it might be a good idea to go on Weevil or Robinhood and invest a little money on 5G or Apple, or, you know, investigate these uh, Motley Fool people. Um, I um, had been watching them and you, you guys may remember, I bought trees and stuff for my son. I, I could not believe it. One grapevine was $39. Does that not seem a little high, but I had to buy one, so. But what I bought is a bag of fertilizer and it was $30 and I had heard from this Motley Fool group that the fertilizer was going up and they were buying stock. So um, I get your five free stock. So now, um, let's see, during the depression industry um, went down. So we want to take a look at industry. And so if you're like I am, and this was really telling to me, you might be saying, well, like what kind of industry? Well, health and medical insurance. Now this is our industry, you guys. It makes up 11, 11.39% of our uh, GD, of our industry makes up 11 percent of our monies drug and cosmetic hospitals pharmaceuticals public schools new car dealers life insurance and annuities in the u.s property and casualty and direct insurance so our industry is connected to health care big time and public schools and the public schools have been closed all year so uh, none of these things can you eat it you can drive a new car so um i thought that was very telling telling seems like maybe they're not invested in health they're supposedly keeping us healthy people are very dependent on health care uh, I was studying healthcare uh, for years. Gross domestic product. During the depression, it was down 20%. They're admitting to, uh, let's see. Like seven, eight percent, but but actually it's probably all things considering 50% of the population is unemployed. That is not good. During the depression, the middle class was hit hardest. Okay, during the depression, what was the advent of uh, credit? And when people lost their jobs, 
they couldn't make their house payment, their car payment, and their credit card payments. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, there was this like big thing, save your money, and they would give us these little savings books, and you know, we would deposit our money, and you know, they're trying to teach us to be thrifty and stuff. It was still going on by the time, so the, the depression was 1930, and I was born in 1955, and so it took me a while to get in school. So, you know, it was still going on then. So, um, the same thing is now, if you lose your job and you lose your house and you lose your car and you lose your credit, basically you got out of it with your life and lost all your hard work, all the accumulation of wealth. So now we're at the beginning and so we want to say to ourselves, well, I'm going to do every possible thing I possibly, possibly can to survive this and, you know, protect everything. So if you're losing your job, that seems to indicate that somebody else employed you and they didn't deem your job. Your job maybe was non-essential. Your job had to be downsized because other people had to be um, paid minimum wage, which didn't do you any good. And, um, and all of us know kind of like, um, you know, uh, machines are taking over. Like if I go over there to Walmart, they have like 10 kiosks supervised by one person. So 10 people are all checking out at once. So what do you think this is going to do to the checkers? It's going to eliminate a lot of jobs not and other things like um you know uh these uh warehouse workers now being uh you know there's uh robots and and um things like that and and then you know all these um they want to make us go green greener and you know a lot of jobs might be lost there so um you know, what has to be done is we have to employ ourselves. I mean, if we start now, if you have a job getting a side job, it's not that easy, but it's not easy to be jobless either. So um, the thing about self-employment is you gotta find something that, one good thing about, you know, like eBay that I do, uh, once I post the thing, it is, it is, available on eBay to millions of people seven days a week. So it, I've been doing it a couple years and then, you know, there's like, um, I do the swap meet. So basically the only way up and out of, uh, this, um, working for other people is the merchant class. You've got to figure out a way to do this. And it, it's not that easy to do. Uh, you know, they tax you, there's fees, but it is a lot easier than no job. So, um, be putting that in the, I would try to go out of service. You know, I was in the hairdressing trade, you know, I was providing the service and, and, I see people trying to work a little bit in the salons and I thought, you know, it is better to, to buy, to sell merchandise of some sort. You know, it could be, I, you could start out with any kind of household junk. Okay, you guys. Or also there's like information, you know, there's these sites, you know, you see them all the time you know, groups and you pay a little bit and you're part of these groups online, you know, figuring out how to do that. Don't be resistant to it. It's, it's a good idea. And, um, so perhaps this 5G is really going to, we might be at, we might be at the cusp of a whole new way of life technologically. So, um, you know, it behooves us to kind of start moving around. Um, you know, there's a lot of satellite technology as well. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.